Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem maximum number of vowels in a substring of a given length. We're given a string s and an integer k. k represents the size of our substring, but I prefer to call it a window because substring problems are commonly sliding window problems. So that's the first thing that I usually look for. And in this case, that's exactly what's going to happen. But don't worry if you're not familiar with the sliding window algorithm, I will really try to explain the intuition behind it because it's not a super crazy algorithm. But if you're already familiar with it, this problem is pretty much a textbook example of the fixed sliding window algorithm. Sometimes you also have variable sliding windows. But in this case, we are just given the integer k, and of course k is fixed, so we have fixed sliding windows. Okay, but what is the problem even asking of us? So basically, given a string, we can take windows of size k, in this case k is 3. So the first three characters, this is a window, the next three characters, and these three characters, and just keep going exactly like that. So for every single window, well, how many windows are there? Roughly, there are going to be n windows. What's the size of each window? Well, of course, it's going to be k. So if we had to go through every single substring and just count the characters, character by character, this is what the time complexity would be. And that's pretty much what we're doing in this problem. We're not actually counting each character. We are checking each character to see if it is a English vowel. So we want to count the number of vowels in each of these substrings. And what we want to return is the maximum. So whichever one of these substrings has the maximum number of vowels, that's the number that we want to return, the maximum number of vowels in any of those substrings. And it's as simple as big O of n times k. We could do it with a nested for loop. Just to walk through it, we'd go character. The A is not a vowel. This is not a vowel. And this is not a vowel. So all three characters starting from here. Next, we'd start at the second character here. Is this a vowel? Nope. Is this a vowel? Nope. Is this a vowel? Yes. So here we had one vowel. Next, we're going to do something similar. We're going to go to the next character. It's not a vowel. Next character, it's a vowel. Next character, it's a vowel. So here we have two vowels. We can just continue going like this, but are you kind of noticing we're doing something a little bit dumb here? When we're over here, we know that this window has a single vowel in it. And we just went character by character. We went through all three characters. So if the next question is, what about this substring or window. How many vowels are in this substring? Well, most of the problem is already solved. We already know how many vowels are in this portion, this green portion. We already did that. Well, we also did this, but we don't need this, right? So we kind of want to remove this. We're chopping this off and adding this next character, just one character. We remove this and add one character. So you can see going from one window to the next window is actually an O of one time operation. And how many windows we have is N. So actually this algorithm is big O of N. It's not super crazy, is it? The idea is that we can keep track of each window using exactly two pointers. I like to call them the left and right pointer. Of course, the left pointer will tell us the beginning of our window and the right pointer will tell us the ending of our window. Now, we're not going to quite start out like this. We're actually going to start out like this, where both pointers are going to be at the first character, left and right. But then we're going to take this right pointer and shift it to the next character. So right pointer is here. Now, then we shift it again. Now we finally have a window of size K. We could still consider these smaller windows. That's not going to change our result. So I won't pay any attention to that. But now we're finally at our first window. It doesn't have any vowels. So what are we going to do? Well, chop off this guy. So shift our left pointer to the right by one over here and also shift our right pointer, this guy to the right over here. And now this is our window. When we remove this character, we have to check, is it a vowel or not? For our window, we are going to keep track of a count variable. We want to count how many vowels are in this window at any given point. Originally, it was zero. For the first window, we had zero. When we shifted to the right, we removed a non-vowel character and we added a vowel character. We added an I. I is a vowel. So now we should increment our count. So this window has a count of one. And of course, at the end, we want to return what the max count was among any of the windows. I know I went pretty deep for a relative relatively simple problem, but I think taking the time to really understand exactly what's going on helps for a lot of the more difficult problems. So now let's code this up. So the first thing I'm going to do is just create a vowel set. So the five vowel characters are lowercase a, e, 
I, O, and U. Since it's just five characters, we probably don't need to put it in a hash set. This is a hash set in Python. That's the syntax for it. We could have put it in an array. It doesn't really matter because searching it is going to be a constant operation. But, you know, I digress. The space complexity of this function is constant because there's just five characters. We don't really need extra space here. Now we are going to start iterating. We're going to go through the entire string. The way I like to do it is have an R pointer and you just have it iterate like this with a for loop. Some people use while loops. It's up to you. But we just take the length of the string, have a right pointer that's going to go character by character through the input string. We also, though, have a left pointer. I'm going to declare it up here. It's going to initially be zero. And we're also going to have a couple more variables the count and the result. So those are also initially going to be zero. Now, as we go character by character, we know we want to add one to the count if our character at index R is a vowel character. So if this is in our vowel set, and I'm actually just going to change it to vowel just to make it a little bit shorter. But if it's not in the vowel set, of course, we want to do nothing. So I would just put zero here, which basically adds zero to count, basically not doing anything. And of course, we want to update our result. We want to set it to the max of the result and the count. And you might think that's pretty much it. And then we can go ahead and just return the result, but not quite because remember, we forgot about a parameter here, K. Our window can't be any bigger than k. So before we even try to take the result, let's make sure we have a valid window. What happens if our window is invalid? Well, the length would be bigger than k. How do we get the length? We can take the right index minus left plus one. That gives us the length of the window. If you don't believe me, try it out on an example. Prove it to yourself. So this is the length. If it's bigger than k, then the window is simply too large. We have to make it smaller just by a single character. So we want to shift our left pointer by one. You might think we want to shift our right pointer, but we're already doing that with the for loop. That's kind of why I like to code it up this way. But again, you can kind of feel free to switch it up how you like. Don't forget, we don't just need to update the left index. We also have to update the count because as we remove characters from our window, we possibly want to decrement the count by one. So if the character at index left, the reason I'm putting this line before the incrementation, by the way, by before incrementing is because, of course, we want to use the original left index before we shift it. We want to know, was this character a vowel? So is this in vowel? If it's not, just add zero or just decrement zero, which doesn't do anything, of course. So this is the sliding window approach for this problem. Let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.